When you walk into the Oak Run Baptist Church in Thoroughfare, Virginia, it's like going back in time. Our church was established in 1865. It was originally called Little Zion Church. African American history, visible throughout the sanctuary. Frank Washington's indigenous and African roots both run through this town. My family's connection with this town is probably deeper than most people in this area because we go back generations and we can prove our generational uh, attachment to the county itself. Part of his generational attachment lies here at the Fletcher Allen Cemetery. How many people are buried here, would you say? Right here, we're close to like 70, 75 people in this area here. Some of them have their headstones marked. Others are marked by just stones, a common practice when enslaved Africans buried their family members. Names not written, but clear signs their lives existed. These are usually the only identifying markers you would have for graves in, you know, from that time frame. There's either something like this or a smaller stone like that. Not far down the road, Washington says another group of his ancestors lay buried. The Scott Cemetery, which is on the other side of here, has 75 to 100. But the final resting place of these ancestors is no longer in his reach. We have a, a lack of respect for, for those that have gone before us. Um, we have one cemetery that has been completely bulldozed. Washington says the Scott Cemetery now sits beneath land owned by a brewery. It's a cemetery that is documented. It's not some obscure uh, thing that came about out of the blue. It's something that is established within the county records itself. And our national investigative team found it's not a singular case. We found dozens of other cases where African Americans are consistently fighting to protect the land of their loved ones from construction and development. In Maryland, the Bethesda African Cemetery Coalition, or BACC, is currently in a legal battle with a private developer and Montgomery County to preserve the burial grounds where enslaved people are buried. What was meant to be the final resting place, now desecrated by excavators. It's a battle BACC's fought for over eight years. They paved a parking lot over it. That's on one part of the cemetery. The other part of the cemetery, they're trying to build a storage unit. Robert Stubblefield, an organizer for BACC, says they're taking this fight as far as it can go, with supporters backing them in court. We reached out to the Housing Opportunities Commission of Montgomery County, Maryland, to comment on the case. They stated that a recent appeals court decision confirms it followed the law for burial grounds. They added that HOC acknowledges the significance of the African-American history affiliated with this site and will continue to respect and honor this legacy in the community. Frank Washington's also in a legal battle with the brewery and the county's board of supervisors. But the brewery isn't backing down. The owner responded to our request for comments, saying in a statement that Washington's allegations are completely without merit and says the, quote, speculative grave site underwent two extensive archaeological studies by professional firms, adding that Mr. Washington just can't accept the science, which revealed no presence of burial remains. Washington, who grew up in Thoroughfare his entire life, continues to argue the graves are documented, as illustrated in this historic research. That same sense of devaluing for our ancestors um, and for those lying in those graves is exactly how we feel now. We're being devalued as a family. Um, we're being devalued as a race. You know, we're saying that, well, you're not important. Your grave site's not important. Your history is not important. The complicated web of tracking black cemeteries is as complex as American history itself. Following the end of slavery, many African-American families continue to face restrictions on where they can bury their ancestors. Across much of the U.S., local law segregated burial sites by race. African-American burial grounds often fail to receive the same type of maintenance and record keeping that predominantly white burial grounds enjoyed. Fast forward over a century later, and the country's dark past makes discovering black burial sites a challenge state and local governments face to this day. Every state in the country has cemetery laws, but they differ from place to place. In most states, violating cemetery laws and removing remains is a misdemeanor, but in some states, it's a felony. Permits are supposed to be filed if someone wants to legally remove remains if they're discovered, but Investigate TV found that the permit process is hardly tracked for African American cemeteries. When we were looking for how many black cemeteries are there, you know, are they protected? 
we found it very difficult to find out if state departments know how many cemeteries there are, if the cemetery laws are being enforced, how many permits were actually filed, if there were any at all. Is that the daunting task that you guys have found as well when it comes to actually making sure that these sites are preserved? You can't preserve something unless you know where it is and what it is in most cases. Now there are some sites, uh, like archeological sites, sites associated with uh, tribal cultural resources that must remain confidential for a variety of reasons. But when it comes to cemeteries, uh, when it comes to protecting those who have gone before us, um, it's important for us to understand um, where those are so that we can understand uh, how to protect them. Sarah Bronin also believes funding for sites and burial grounds is a necessity that is long overdue. Federal agencies have not been uh, blameless in uh, the treatment of burial sites. As part of the federal government, the Advisory Council is hoping that by remembering the things that we have all done wrong in the past, by recognizing uh, those wrongs, and by trying to create new policies and guidance going forward. The Bipartisan African American Burial Grounds Preservation Act, signed into law this year, establishes a program at the National Park Service to provide grants and technical assistance to research, identify, survey, and preserve these cemeteries. But we looked at the fiscal budget for 2023 funding and found zero dollars allocated this year. The National Park Service says Congress has the authority to appropriate funding for operating the grant program. President Biden's budget request for 2024 does include and proposes $3 million for this program. Stubblefield says this law doesn't go far enough. But they were just talking about funding a lot of like uh, nonprofits that quite frankly do not understand African burial customs. They don't understand the importance of seashells or the fact that a lot of burial grounds like at Moses or like Whispering Souls have like glass bottles which bear significance to uh, African religious customs. He also says the act doesn't guarantee funding for community groups and descendant communities. I don't care who's doing the desecration. You can be government employee, you can be private sector, you can be nonprofit. If you're desecrating a grave, you need to be dealt with accordingly. It goes back to a basic fundamental question. That question is, are black people human? This is my great aunt Betty, and she used to sit right here in this, this pew every Sunday. It's the same reason Frank Washington refuses to give up his fight. He says he won't rest until his community recognizes his family, remembers their history, and respects his battle to preserve them. That regardless of what they've done, it's not going to change my belief in myself. It's not going to change the fact that I value who I am. It's not going to change the fact that I value those bodies lying in that grave. Whether I know their last names or not, um, I know they existed. I'm proof that they existed.